Hi and welcome to episode 120 of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of This Reportage and This Reportage family, and I'm a photographer too. Excited to talk to the fab Stacey Gillespie this week. One of the best wedding photographers in the USA, Stacey, along with her husband Trent, shoot weddings all over the world and have won a haul of seven reportage awards and two story awards between them. She shares so much in the episode today, including how and why it's so important to immerse yourself in the wedding, snow and mountain weddings and the extra logistical considerations they bring, confidence in using flash in all different circumstances and the workshop she runs about this, and Netflix synopsis game, the story behind one of her specific reportage awards, finding a good work-life balance, marketing, empathy, and so much more. Before we get on to Stacey, um, just a little bit of news from me and an exciting one, and it's that we've just announced our TIR and TIRF Christmas party. Yeah, I always enjoy our Christmas parties, really so much fun. Um, if you've not been to one before, you know, it's, it's not a workshop or talk or anything, it's just a party where we all get together after a long, busy season and enjoy a drink or, or nine or ten. And, and dance the night away. Yeah, and past parties had photographers from all over Europe. And it's just a fab chance to, to meet up with everyone, talk and drink and, yeah, have a good time. Maybe not remember much about it the night before, but that's why we have a fellow photographer there to capture it all for us. Whether that's a good thing or bad, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, um, it's a totally free party for members. Um, it's in December the 12th of Monday. Lots of info's gone out in the latest newsletter. If you want to come along, um, you just need to RSVP by using the form on the link in the newsletter or on the members area. Um, yeah, as I say, totally free for members and you can bring a guest along too. And yeah, it's, it's going to be a great night. So hopefully you can make it. Right, over to Stacey. Hey, Stacey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm yeah, I'm good as well. Thank you. Yep, all good. Let's start how I've always been starting. So, what's the weather like with you? Although it's super early, isn't it? What time it is? What is it with you at the moment? It's currently six a.m. So <laughs> the sun is coming up. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You've got to be. Um, that's got to be the earliest someone's been on the podcast with me. So I thank you for your dedication to getting <laughs> up that early. <laughs> oh, but actually, that's that's funny because I've got I think a question for you later on about how you like rising uh, early, don't you? I think. Yes. So. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's easier in the morning because the kids are sleeping and. The house is quiet, so it's perfect. That is true. That is perfect. Yes. Well, I thank you for your dedication. Uh, no, that's awesome. Um, yeah. So the sun's coming up. That's nice. So whereabouts in? Because you're in America, aren't you? Yes. Yes. So I'm in Colorado, but I'm up in the mountains. Um, I'm up in the ski resort town, um, just outside of Breckenridge, Colorado, um, in Silverthorne. Um, oh, so cool. we live. Yeah, we live just under nine thousand feet in altitude up here by a bunch of ski resorts. Oh, wow. Gosh, that's cool. Very, well, very yeah. cool, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't, get, we, don't, we don't get the excessive warm weather like a lot of people do. Okay, but you must like that, though. That must be, that's your choice. Yeah, you like that. Yeah, I would probably have winter most of the year if I could. I love oh, snow. Yeah. That's cool. Do you know, I've never, I've never ever skied, ever. Oh, my goodness. It's addicting. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Is it great? It is. I, I probably, I started learning after our second child was born. So I've only really been getting into it for the last three years and then have been learning with my kids. Um, uh, they're six and three and they show me up. So, <laughs> uh, it's now our family thing, but yeah. Oh, yeah. that must be such a lovely thing to do as a family. Does, so even the three-year-old, did they ski? Oh, she's fearless. Yes. Wow. <laughs> she, she prefers to wear a princess dress while she does it. Um, she has a oh. fanny pack with her snacks, and she loves to go straight down. <laughs> oh, that must be a bit scary as an adult, though, as well. Is it a bit scary? Yeah, I just chase her and yell, slow down a lot, but um, <laughs> it works. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I need to do it. Yeah, just something I've never experienced at all, not skied, not um, snowboarded or anything. Yeah, I, I need to do it. should do it some yeah, point. Yeah, definitely do worth it. Do you capture many weddings in that kind of snowy environment? Do they have weddings at ski resorts and things? That's, yeah, that's mainly why it's so wonderful to live up here. We're next to like the destination hub for um, ski resort weddings. And a lot of times in the summer, a lot of our weddings, you get to them by, you know, gondola or a chairlift. Oh, wow. To get on the mountaintop. Um, and then winter weddings are even becoming more of a thing. 
Uh, a lot of times we'll photograph bride and groom skiing on their wedding day. And sometimes the bride will even ski into our ceremony. Really? Um, wow. Yeah. It's, and, and most of the time people fly in, you know, from out of state or whatever for that experience because they love skiing or have some history with it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful to live so close to it because it is really, you know, it's a quick drive to work. The that's weekends. that's very cool and so handy yeah. that you can properly ski there now because that must be coming handy <laughs> when you're photographing those yeah it's definitely a lot more awkward to be skiing and trying to take photos and move with yeah, <laughs> I, can't imagine life. That. <laughs> I find it hard enough just to walk in normal life and take photos are they on the ground well, likewise likewise <laughs> so, and we're very tall and so it gets really lengthy and awkward but it, it works <laughs> that's so cool wow so yeah. different I re yeah that's awesome I've I've only I've done one wedding in uh, Switzerland in Verbier where I had to go on a, a chairlift and but they did it in August so like the snow wasn't there but it was up on the mountain but I have an irrational fear of um like chairlifts you know I've had it since oh. a kid so yeah I don't think I could yeah. do many ski resort weddings are you okay with them yeah yeah i'm okay but i definitely don't recommend i mean just carrying your gear and trying to balance is yeah oh. yeah i wouldn't recommend it <laughs> yeah i just yeah i wouldn't be able to do that well much respect to you both for doing that that's, that's, that's very cool have you ever had any like proper tumbles with the camera or anything oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah i mean like when you're on skis or trend snowboards um which is even harder uh to like photograph with and move you because you know you're attached to one big board uh yeah he's had a few, few falls and so have i and you just quickly get up and hope no one saws it see <laughs> it and just keep going so, yeah. oh man it sounds exciting though it sounds um yeah very very cool very cool sorry i keep making the cool joke i've got to not make the cool joke that's uh yeah that's bad english <laughs> humor bad dad humor that is <laughs> <laughs> and, and how is your wedding season uh, going at the moment are you in the thick of things at the moment yeah, we are. We are. Um, we're heading out today for another wedding five hours away in another ski resort town. Um, we've got a big stretch coming up where we only have one weekend off until the end of October. Wow. Um, so we're kind of, but this year is healthy. I mean, we've, we've really balanced our schedule. Well, finally took 12 years to figure that out, but, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, we've, we've, uh, we've made it work to where we, you know, Aren't, don't feel overwhelmed and we can really enjoy each weekend and wedding and have a good break in between that's great isn't it that's like the the nirvana of um yeah what we do when you when you can find that balance though it is so important yeah it's it's so hard to do but it's it's worth it absolutely how many weddings have you shot when it's been you know too many in a year um you know like 55 oh um, yeah which I know some people shoot a lot. I mean, we, I mean, when we're both, you know, we're husband and wife teams. So I shoot with my husband um, when we're both gone and we do, we do unlimited day of coverage. So, you know, they could be 12, 14, 15 hour days. Um, mm. It can, it can be a lot. Yeah. Especially when you're going up and down mountains and altitude oh, um, yeah. and climbing cliffs a lot. It's physically a lot more enduring than when we just stay like at one venue location and go from the lawn to the ball. To the yeah. Lawn. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. of course. I mean, I get tired enough on a, a standard English wedding, like 10 hours, <laughs> all at the same venue, <laughs> all totally flat. You know, I can't imagine doing what you're doing. Wow. Well, yeah. 55 in a year is a lot. That's a lot. So how many are you doing kind of like this year? What's the nice number that you found? Um, I think we're just at 30, um, but there's good space in between. Um, we did a lot of winter weddings this year, a lot of ski weddings. So, you know, it's not so heavy in the summer. Um, and so that's helped tremendously, obviously spreading out the income doesn't hurt either. Um, mm. but yeah, but yeah, it's, we usually have like right now, besides August and September, we have like one or two weekends off every month. That's so. important. That's good to have, isn't it? Especially when, with children as well. It's so important. Yeah. They're just at that age where it's, we're starting to be like, oh my goodness, they're growing up too fast and we can enjoy life with them. We're not doing like naps and diapers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. It's one of the best things about our job. I feel lucky as a dad been doing this job for the past like 10 years or so. And I just, I was able to spend so much more time with my kids growing up than, you know, like the typical nine to five um, person. So that's a, it's a great aspect of it. It's probably the best in our opinion, especially since both of us do it. I mean, like we leave for Telluride today 
um, which is like the Switzerland of America, people call it here. Oh, okay. um, really beautiful mountain town. And we're taking our kids with us for five days. Oh, that's so, lush. Yeah, we get to travel with them, experience some different towns with them, and then um, and it'll still work. So, yeah, it's the dream. It is the dream, isn't it? Really, what more can you want in life? That is awesome, though. It is. <laughs> and I can hear how you sound super happy as well. It sounds um, Thank it's you. really, really cool. It's lovely talking to you already. It's really cool. Um, and so, Stacey, you already mentioned there that you work with your husband, Trent. And mm-hmm. I read um, that on your second date with your now husband, Trent, he, quote, introduced me to a camera where we photographed a lightning storm. It didn't take me long to fall in love with photography and the guy that handed it to her, which is just so lovely, I think. It's very romantic. I'm both, you know, it's so lovely. Can you, can you tell us more about that and then how you came to be a wedding photographer? Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, it's, yeah, I, I, I love love stories. <laughs> um, but yeah, ours is unique in that, you know, when I met Trent, we've been on a, you know, soon he took me on a date and he was just getting into photography, had worked in a lab, um, a photo lab during college. Um, so he, we went out and there was a lightning storm and he had his camera and we photographed a lightning storm um, near a windmill. And nice. that was, the first time I'd ever been handed a camera and um, we had a lot of fun and we were, you know, it's just kind of not, a unique date. Yeah. Yeah. Proper unit. Yeah, yeah. It's not, not the easiest thing to capture the first time with a camera, a lightning storm. <laughs> no. Yeah. And if you know Trent, I mean, technical stuff, just, he loves that stuff. He loves to puzzle piece, the hardest stuff. Um, so it, it worked well for us and we had a lot of fun. Um, and then he started photographing some friends weddings, you know, soon after and asked me to come help and, it was the classic, like, just show up and I'll put the settings on the camera and you'll be fine. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say that now, but, uh, but I went out and, and, um, and I just love people. I love connection and I'm, I'm a very emotional, like I love getting to know, you know, different families and stuff like that. And so I just quickly fell in love with like what weddings were and how transparent people were. Um, and then I couldn't get enough of the camera and I was like, I want to do this. Um, and that was a little aggressive to say when we had just started dating and, (laughs) (laughs) uh, but we, we ended up photographing weddings together for five or six years before we got married. Um, wow. And that's quite, quite a good way of getting to know someone to be working together with them as well. Like every weekend did, um, yeah. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite <laughs> full on, actually. It's, actually, good. like, we don't joke about it. Like, that's the hardest premarital counseling you could ever have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make it or break it at that point. Yeah, you knew you were going to last if you could cope yeah. for five years of marriage, uh, of weddings together. Wow, that's really cool. Great story. So, and so what came, What were you both doing before? You mentioned Trent worked in a lab. Was that right? Yeah, yeah. So he... He worked in the photo lab and studied journalism and pretty much did photography straight out. I, I continued to work for quite a while. I was um, in the sales, um, corporate sales uh-huh. and line of things. So it was a complete flip of, <laughs> of a role. But, you know, work during the weekend, we try to shoot as much as I can on the weekend. Um, yeah. It's hard to do that both together. Well, um, did you both kind of quit your day jobs at the same time to go into the, the wedding photography? Or did one of you quit first and... Yeah, so Trent was really like the entrepreneur of our whole business and and did that and built it. And I worked for quite a while, just like the worry of both incomes and insurance and Mm. what that meant for like buying a house and having kids in the future. Um, But once we felt like things were built strong enough, like uh, we made the leap together and it was the best thing we did because that's when things really started. Like my energy and, you know, us as a team really flourished. Yeah. Very cool. Like cool. Yeah. Great stuff. And now do you do you always shoot together or do do you ever sometimes do separate weddings solo? Good question. Um yeah. So we for a while in our business, we shot we each shot a wedding on the same day and hired an assistant. That was kind of like when I needed to find my own voice. Cause you know, Trent had taught me everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I I kind of needed to, you know, it, it was important that I kind of find my own way a little bit. And so yeah. Um, but in the last five years or so, all of the big weddings, we tend to sh- photograph together. Um, but, you know, a lot of weddings up here can be smaller elopement style um, because of the ski resort, like 20 person weddings. Um, so um, I tend to photograph those alone. Um, okay. But yeah. Yeah. 
most of the time together though that's cool yeah i just yeah. i can't imagine you know i love my wife very very dearly very very <laughs> dearly <laughs> I, just, I just honestly i can't imagine what it'd be like working with her maybe it'd be great i just don't know whenever i i take the camera out on a normal day she's always like oh photograph that photograph that and i can't i just can't imagine if she would be like that at a wedding i don't know but um do you two ever do you ever argue or anything on a wedding day or is it always oh, yeah. Yeah, you do, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's not rainbow and sunshine i mean it's hard um you know we we are if you get to know us each we're very different we're very different personality wise i'm outgoing bubbly emotional like you know and and trent's very technical and quiet but he's a problem solver um right and uh you know we kind of started making fun of each other and i know we kind of it's been good for us but we take outtakes of each other on the wedding day <laughs> and a lot of times it, it can be the dirty look that we give each other <laughs> or, or like something silly that one's doing it's like what the heck were you thinking um <laughs> and uh, you know we actually blog those uh oh, dude, that's cool I yeah that's cool. <laughs> and and uh, you know it's been good for us because it's something we look back at you know even shooting through pregnancies and tough times um and look back at those and it's been also good for our clients to see us work. Um, yeah, yeah, it shows yeah. the proper human side and the personalities behind the business as well. I think that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. really cool. Do you have like a set system where one of you will always cover the groom prep and the other one doing the bridal prep or do you change things around? Yeah, so typically I do groom prep and Trent does bridal prep. We find that mixing the gender. Um, ah, it's interesting. It, it works really well, you know, like a guy coming into groom prep and being like, telling them like let's hurry it up and stuff is but a like you know a lady coming in and just you know can be it just they respond differently um that so typically tip, yeah typically we do that and trends really calming and um and that presence is sometimes really much needed in bridal breath <laughs> um, sure. mm -hmm. uh, yeah and but a lot of times we just go based off personality like because we are so different and just what connects with each room um but yeah there's no set formula uh -huh. per se that's yeah. cool. That's really interesting as well about the, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the different sexes and just, yeah, reading the different kind of personalities. I mean, yeah, oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, Stacey, let's, um, let's change tack slightly. And yeah. um, I, I, you mentioned before we started recording that you've, you have listened to a few episodes of the podcast. And so do, do, do you watch much kind of television or, or movies or Netflix? I knew this was coming. I probably should have warned you. I don't watch a ton. I am. <laughs> you can teach me. I'm, I'm going to fail. But um, yeah, I definitely, I'm not so much of a TV watcher. I read a lot, read novels, but. Oh, I should have changed it. I should have changed it to like kind of book synopses or something. Yeah. Well, I've got some, uh, the, your ones, I don't know why, but your ones are a bit more kind of classic. Uh, so you might be okay, you know, even if you're not watching stuff recently. So okay. are you up for go? Right. Uh, for, okay, cool. So if, yeah, if anyone's listening for the first time, um, just a little, I don't know why I started doing this, but it just separates. It just, I, I quite enjoy it. That is why I think so. Um, yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to read a few synopses to Stacey of either a series or a movie and we'll see if she can get a title and hopefully you enjoy playing along at home as well okay stacy so your first one this is an old movie about what oh, is old you're uh, it's probably like 20 years old but it's a classic okay <laughs> okay so an eight-year-old troublemaker must protect his house from a pair of burglars when he is accidentally left home alone by his family during christmas vacation Oh, I know. Home Alone. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I got one. Yes. You got it. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I love that. <laughs> That's a classic, though, isn't it? That is a classic. Oh, I, yeah. I love that. I love, mm. love that movie. It's great. Uh, it's great. And the uh, second one's great as well. Have you seen the second one? Okay. Um, no, I haven't. Love You've not seen Home Alone 2? No. Maybe so. <laughs> oh, well, you've got to see Home Alone 2. You should watch it this Christmas. Um, yeah, okay. Alone in New York. It's just as good, I think, as the first one, actually. It's really good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you like Christmas okay. movies in general? I Yeah, I love. I'm that cheesy Hallmark romance movie person during oh, Christmas. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Can't help it. That's yeah. cool. No, I love that too. I love, I think my fa my most favorite genre of movies is romantic comedy. I just love romantic comedies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who doesn't? You want I, to feel good, you laugh. Yes. Yes, that's true. Who doesn't? That is true. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> what is your, have you got a favorite Christmas movie? Oh, oh my goodness. I don't know if I have a favorite Christmas movie. My favorite movie is Notting Hill. 
Oh yes, that's great. That's a, that is a classic um, a romantic comedy, is it though? Yeah, that is you know, great. I, I even taught my kids to say "oops a daisy." Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah I love that scene so yeah that's Hugh Grant and Ju- uh, Julia Roberts isn't it yes look at you yeah well I just because I love romantic comedies four weddings, <laughs> four weddings and a funeral is one of my favorites as well with Hugh Grant in and, oh that's good yeah love yes. that. well sorry but anyway let's go let's go let's go back to your questions <laughs> uh, okay so this one is another movie it's it's probably I think it's even older than Home Alone it is actually yeah okay so in 1936, an archaeologist and adventurer is hired by the U.S. government to find the Ark of the Covenant before Hitler's Nazis can obtain its awesome powers. Oh my goodness! No. As a clue, that is a, it's a Harrison Ford film. Mm. He's done a few of them as a kind of an archaeologist adventurer. Oh, like in the tombs and stuff. It's no? the, yes, is that kind of thing? Yes, it is. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I don't know it. I can, oh, don't I can, worry. I can see the cover. I just can't. I yeah, that is uh, is Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh yes, of course. I should have known that. Oh no, no, no worry. You, you, <laughs> did know it, you did know it. It's just getting the title, really. You did know. Yeah, it. you did. Yeah, I got so, one, and I'm already doing better than I thought. So I yeah, <laughs> but a lot of people get zero. So that is very good. <laughs> um, okay, so your your third and final one, Stacey. This one is okay. a TV series, and it's a lot more recent. And so if you're not watching much telly you probably won't know it but i'm gonna ask you anyway (laughs) okay um a group of singles agree to marry partners chosen for them by a team of relationship experts looking forward to a perfect match they must no sorry they meet their mates for the first time on their wedding day this is for real yeah it is like a reality tv series oh wow I know. Definitely don't know it. Definitely. Uh, I've never seen it actually either, but I thought I'd include it. It's got like a wedding thing. It's called um, Married at First Sight. Yeah. Wow. I know. That's wow. Interesting. That's in- it is very interesting. I wonder how that pans out. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine many would stay together. I can't imagine. Oh, likewise. <laughs> you never know though. You never know. Do you watch, I guess, no, so you don't, I guess you don't watch much reality TV in general. No, no, I don't. Okay. Do you know what I I love I love reality TV, I love it. Yeah. It's fine. Really. I feel like when I do get into it, it would probably be very interesting. Uh, yeah, you should do. It. So, what do you do if you don't watch much telly and things? What do you do? You know, for downtime, for pleasure, to to de stress. What What do you love to do? Oh, hello. Oh, Stacy. Can you hear me now? Ooh. Oh, yes, I can hear you now. Yeah. Sorry, it broke out for a minute. Oh, no worries. No. Yeah, so what, what do you do, to, you know, for your kind of pleasure, downtime, to de-stress? You know, what, what do you enjoy doing? Um, my favorite thing to do is probably read. Um, I also am a big hiker, so just taking a walk in the back mountain. We live just at the end of a dirt road on the back of a hill. So the biggest thing for us is probably hiking. Um that's cool. And yeah, and we love to fish. Um, oh, wow. Water. Yeah, we live by ponds in the river and kind of it's a beautiful little mountain sanctuary. So definitely being outside is our calling. So that's yeah. very cool. You know, I've never fished ever, actually. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you'd love it. Yeah, it's catch and release. We have beautiful trout. Yeah, our kids love it. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, I should try that as well. Again, something something to add to my list of things on the podcast to do. I yeah, we're creating a good list for you. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's cool you like hiking and you're able to do that as well, just so near to where you live. Do, do your kids like walking and going with you as well? Yeah. Um, actually, Easton and Trent just got done doing a backpacking trip where they nice. hiked in, carried all their stuff and, and camped. Yeah, so camping, you know, fishing, hiking is definitely – if we have time off, that's what we're doing. That's so cool. What a life you're giving your children there as well. I think that is really cool. Mm. Yeah, watch. Well, she probably grows up and says, I wish I lived in the city. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rebel the other way. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do here. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You know, it's it's hard to get my kids to just want to walk more than like 200 meters, I think. So, yeah, it's awesome that you can um, you do that. You've got that on your doorstep as well. That's cool. Um, let's go back to your photography, Stacey. Yeah. And um, one of my favorite reportage awards of yours is the one um, with a guy like falling or kind of breaking a deck chair with two women (laughs) 
on the right side of the frame, pointing over towards him and laughing. It's such a fab yeah. capture. Can you tell us yeah. a, a more about that? Was it was the guy okay? Um, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think he was a little embarrassed, and the photo keeps coming up, but he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I mean. Um, this group was, this is a fun wedding. It, you know, there were a bunch of people from the East Coast, New Jersey, um, which they fit the demeanor with loud and funny and kind of teasing each other. And I saw them sitting in these chairs and he kind of said it was wobbling and I just got myself ready. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it was and wobbling then, indeed. <laughs> and those ladies just pointed and laughed, like bless their heart, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's great. It always makes me smile looking at that image. I love it. Thank you. It's, it's so yeah. cool. Such a great storytelling image. Because it's not just getting the the him falling over in the chair. It's getting their reactions as well, all in that same frame. It's just so cool. I love it. Really cool. Thank you. Yeah, that's fun. Um, yeah, and so just uh, thank you for t talking about it. Anyone listening now, do head to thisreportage.com. I'll include um, that specific image that Stacey just spoke about as well. Um, and Stacey, you and Trent, you also run your own workshops, is that right? Can you tell us more about them? What what kind of things do you cover? And do you enjoy teaching? Yeah, um, yeah, we love teaching. I think the most rewarding part of it is like, there are just so many amazing, talented photographers and like, especially in Colorado. I mean, I, I don't mean to be biased, but like if you look at the talent we have in the state, uh, it's it's quite dense and it's quite, there's just amazing talent right here. Um, so we are lucky in that, but then the workshops is just, it's a way that we like, we like to teach how to use flash. Um, it's not like a creative per se workshop. It's just like how to get your flash to talk, how to be confident and comfortable in it and how to move with your flash. So in Colorado, we, a lot of times people are shooting on mountaintops, a dark cabin, and then back outside and then a night shot. And so we just have dynamic skies and sometimes difficult settings in regards to being on top of a mountain at 2 PM. Right. Um, sure. And so like our biggest thing is that we just help people understand how to use their flash, especially during dancing, which is our, one of our favorite things to photograph is the crazy dance floor. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, we just kind of share how we use flash and how we don't make the gear a burden. Um, oh, that's cool. And, yeah, and just moving, like I said, we move a lot. So like getting on a gondola with all your gear and a chairlift and climbing and running up a mountain for first look and just being able to move with gear is is difficult and something that took a while for us to master. So we love to, to work with others on that. That's really cool. I think it's also really cool to have a specific kind of direction on a workshop like that, you know, so it's focused yeah. on the kind of flash, but throughout the day and through every element. And, and I know it's something that a lot of photographers, including myself, like kind of struggle with. So I think that's, um, yeah, really cool that you do that. Is it a one day or a two day thing? Or? We do a two day and typically we even, in the past, we've done it in our house where I, you know, it's kind of like a family style. You eat at our dining, our dining room table. Like, you know, um, nice. I make the meals. We get to oh, know nice. each other. Um, and it's just, and it's a ton of fun. And I think like for us, like you can take the same photos every weekend um, and uh, with like the same lighting. But for us, like we really got excited creatively when we were able to just like pop flash in certain portraits or moments or in a room and prep and wait for someone to walk in it. It just made us feel a little more energized in our, in our career. Um, cool. And yeah. And like I said, like hands down, the best part of it has been our alumni group and the amazing friends we've made. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, really nice. It's rewarding, isn't it? Doing it's a, it's a cool yeah. thing doing the workshop. I do. I always get super nervous, but it is really really fun as well. Do you get nervous? Yeah. Do you get? I think you sound to me like you just don't get nervous about things. Or do you? <laughs> I I'm like that weird person that like loves to public speak and loves <laughs> to talk to people. Um, yeah, like uh, yeah, I I get nervous about certain things, but not talking in front of people no <laughs> oh that's wow i wish i could have that that is um yeah super cool to not feel so you weren't even nervous not even your very first workshop no um i was a little nervous yeah i was more so just nervous that things would flow or if people would find what we say valuable yes um, yeah um, absolutely i get that because when you do a workshop you want people to get as much from it as possible don't you so 
I oh. yeah, that's where the nerves. If you do get nerves, that's where it stems from. It's just wanting people to enjoy it and get stuff from it. It's uh, it's quite a big deal to do, really. Have you got any coming up? Um, no, we don't have any. We did two earlier this spring, um, so okay, we're cool. taking a little break from it. But but no, I do agree with you. Like it's so emotional to like share what you love about your job and and be so passionate about it. And you know, just like the wedding industry in general, like you never you deliver a gallery and sometimes you're like, I love the photos, but you know, there isn't much of a feedback phase, mm. um, in our job. And you don't always need that. I, I don't think, but at the same time, like when you're doing a workshop, I want to be like, do you get it? Do you like it? Like, yes. you know? <laughs> like do you, do you want to go try it? You know? <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Oh yeah, yeah. Cool. And you must get, because it's so specific as well, but with technique like that, you must, you must get great feedback where it's changed people's photographies, where they've felt confident going into situations where they weren't confident beforehand. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, you know, I, I, I kind of compare it to, I played college volleyball and um, I kind of compare it to that. Like when the coach would tell me to make an adjustment or do something and like, and you see someone take it on right away and just go to the next wedding. And all of a sudden you're like, what? Like, you know, it's, That's and cool. I, yeah, it's wonderful. And I think, I think the biggest part that we were shocked about is it it's helped tremendously with burnout, right? A lot of people get, burnout in our industry as photographers mm. <laughs> so yeah in, in, I mean burnout in what way in in, in, in stopping like you they, getting burnout or stopping your attendees getting in, burnout yeah stopping the attendees like maybe they just feel like oh I'm just you know doing a ring shot or doing a uh, dance the same shot every uh, time yeah. with the same lens I'm shooting the 85 doing this and like switch like you know introducing flash or making them think differently will just allow them to go with like a fresh canvas every uh, yeah totally makes sense totally makes sense yeah. um and for me actually it was similar when i changed uh, a camera system from canon to sony a few years ago that kind of reinvigorated me you know i was at a point where i'd been uh, maybe a bit stale and just just having a change in system like that can really um have an effect mm. i think so yeah it just gets your makes your mind think it challenges you a little bit yeah mm, definitely yeah. Um, you mentioned, I don't know what, I, I just picked, I mentioned that you played volleyball, which again, I've always yeah. thought volleyball seems so cool and something that I've never played. <laughs> it's, um, so, uh, that's cool. Did you do that for quite a while? Yeah, yeah. So I played college um, and, you know, played all through my career. And, you know, when I got done, I got into like sand volleyball uh, oh, cool. here and there. And that's been fun. But obviously photographing on the weekends takes me away from like, you know, playing in tournaments anymore and stuff like that. Plus I'm getting a little older, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> must but keep yeah, fit when you do do it though. Oh, it's, uh, you know, it's amazing. It's a hard workout, but I've got a good crew, um, up here in the mountains and, you know, we'll go sometimes play in the morning or train or I'm playing with some high school gals, helping them. And yeah, I still oh, love to play. Still that's love cool. Is it two against yeah. two or is there more team, more players on a normal volleyball team? Yeah. It's two against two in sand, which is, okay easier to do when you don't have a big group yeah. yeah okay cool cool i've never tried volleyball again something i should have <laughs> <the list>. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's for you. <laughs> oh, that's funny that's funny yeah. um you might uh, talking about your flash specifically and, and using it in different situations do you do you use the flash uh for the speeches at all yeah so a lot of you know um a lot of times we'll try to just set up a light stand in a place where we kind of know moments are going to happen, but speeches for sure. And that head table, like we just posted yesterday on our Instagram, like the sunset was happening during speeches and to be able to bring those mountains and that purple sky into the frame by just adding a little bit of flash on the subjects inside, it doesn't interrupt their moment. Um, it lets things happen organically, but it allows us to like push the dynamic range on our cameras and bring the outside in makes um, total sense yeah yeah, yeah. that's very cool it. people people listen you need to go on stacy and trent's workshop <laughs> when they do yeah. another one you should <laughs> but you obviously know your stuff though and i can totally understand how it could reinvigorate someone's whole coverage and their whole confidence so yeah that's very <laughs> very cool um what do you personally stacy what do you find the most challenging aspect of uh, you know being a wedding photographer to be whether that's the most challenging aspect of shooting or if it's the business side of it what yeah what's the most challenging for you um i think the most i don't know i, th I think it's the most challenge i'm an optimistic so i think it's most challenging but i think it's also the most rewarding is like it's very emotionally exhausting sometimes mm -hmm. <laughs> um 
to shoot a wedding, uh, I definitely like you leave really tired um, is, you know, we definitely, I think a lot of times when we invest a day, it's like a day or two recovery, which makes it, you know, it isn't like something you just check out of, you know, mm-hmm. Um, is that because so you're getting quite personally involved with the yeah day? I, I i'm like i'm very much an emotional shooter like i often like you know people don't see it but i often like cry behind the camera or feel mm. what i'm witnessing which i think allows a person to take photographs that are relatable but at the same time like it's just so exhausting <laughs> when you leave a wedding day um but with that being said the exhausting part is like you know never being off, like, you know, um, you know, always responding to emails or, you know, trying to do social media and thinking about leads and SEO. And, you know, sometimes I wonder if I had like the nine to five job and actually had like consistent daycare, (laughs) if I would, you know, have a little bit more of a balance in that, but, um, yeah, but you wouldn't have the kind of life that you've got now. I think if you were doing that. Yeah. Like where you can travel with kids or take them, but, um, that's definitely like the hardest part is just like, the day-to-day balance of like when to turn on work and when to turn it off yeah Um, i totally get that totally get that Uh, do you outsource any element of your business you know whether that's editing or social media or seo or anything or do you do it all yourselves we're we're not great at outsourcing (laughs) (laughs) don't take it um we just we outsource some of our general editing this year and that's been helpful oh that's um Mm. but everything else is done in-house you know trent's a web developer too and does seo and then i you know, do the social media. So yeah. Oh, you do it all. That's full on. It's full on. Yeah, I know. I know. It's probably not wise, but don't listen to us on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that as well though. And you know, I've never been good at, I've never been one for outsourcing. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a control freak as well. It's just that, but when it's your own business, it's kind of, you just kind of want to do everything yourself, even if you're, but it, in a way it doesn't make sense. You know, if there are definitely, there are experts in fields, but it's relinquishing, you know, I can't imagine someone else doing my social media, for example, and they, you know, they don't have the same tone of voice or it's not me. Do you know what I mean? It's, um, oh, that you nailed it. Like a hundred percent. It's a personality. It's like, it's mm. sharing who you are as an individual and what you believe as a business and, you know, what's important to you as a photographer and all that comes across in like how you communicate and social media. I, have a hard time understanding you know unless they're just doing a bunch of reels for you or something but uh, yeah mm. i couldn't outsource that yeah no i agree yeah i yeah. agree it's funny this whole social media world isn't it i mean when oh, i was when i was a kid like teenager growing up it didn't exist you know or and oh. it's funny thing about our kids now growing up within the social media world in the future as well i don't want to think about oh. it it's it's insane it's, and it's changed a lot in the last six months i feel like i'm like of oh, what I feel like all of a sudden I'm outdated and saying things like my mom, like back in yeah. my day, I used to be able to just post a photo. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Instagram was for photos, not videos. Yeah. yeah and like having to have, um, you know, from going from landscape frame, you know, like the way they're pushing the full screen in the way. Yeah. It's mm. yeah. That's hard for me because the storytelling, the documentary should. Yeah. It's hard. It is harder. Yeah, it's harder to compose storytelling kind of shots in a portrait orientation. I find personally, it's harder to make interesting yeah. compositions in portrait orientation as well, I think. It absolutely it breaks all the, the rules of journalism, of storytelling, you know, like, so, yeah, it's hard. Oh, uh, well, maybe they'll be, you know, another six months, they'll change completely. And yeah. uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it'll be then. But anyway, anyway, um, Stacey, have you I like this question. Um, have you ever made any really memorable mistakes at all? Whether that's again, it could be a shooting mistake or a business mistake or a life mistake. Any interesting, memorable mistakes? Yeah, I mean, um, definitely right like we always know we always know the shots that we missed right i think Mm -hmm. like that's the part that i lose sleep over is uh, being like this happened you weren't in the right spot you could have been lower and it would have been such a better feeling for the client and that's a missed opportunity like i'll come home and just um and definitely come home from a wedding and just eat myself up about that a little bit oh really Um, do you do that quite often Sometimes I just, you know, I I process it afterwards and things move so fast Um, Mm. on a wedding day, especially, you know, we're definitely like reception heavy photographers in regards to dance and speeches and moments then. And um, a lot of times I'll be like, oh, that was I should have, you know, why didn't I think of that? Or I missed that opportunity. Mm. Um, And so, yeah, that's big. And then we definitely have had 
you know, because we photograph in places in the mountains that are difficult to get to logistic wise, it's very difficult planning because, you know, you're, you're scheduling like how long people are going to be on a gondola or if they're riding a Jeep up a rough road. And a lot of times we're going to places with no cell service. Right. Wow. Yeah. And so we have like really good radios and stuff, but um, the coordination and the travel and the altitude gain and people coming from out of state who sometimes have never been in snow or been on a mountain <laughs> leads, leads to some very troublesome situations in our career. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Like, Any specific you know, ones that come to mind? Yeah, I mean, altitude sickness, you know, oh, being, um, you know, we've seen people throw up for that. Um, another one is, you know, we've thought we were going to the same spot for like portraits or first look location and we're in different spots with no cell service. That was, oh, no. <laughs> that was a lot of dirty looks between Trent and I, but we made it. <laughs> we made it. We were so married. It's great. Um, <laughs> wow. The, the, so, uh, the things you're saying, there's so many logistics involved again. Like I, I get nervous just about turning up to a, just a normal place in England. That's just on the side of the road or <laughs> signposted. Yeah. You're yeah. doing things at a whole other level. Yeah, like we really never leave the bride and groom's hip if they're driving somewhere because we just cannot be separated in case they get lost or they can't find the spot. Because a lot of times we're dropping a pin with latitude and longitude and it's not an address. Right, um, right. So and then we have a radio in each car if, if they are off grid or on a top of a ski mountain. Um, yeah, it's a little different. It's cool. Very different, but very exciting. It sounds like every wedding is totally different. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it. Yeah, we love it. We love because we love the outdoors, so it kind of matches with what our passion is too. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, let's change tack again slightly, Stacy. Um, can you tell me something that you're truly awful at? Oh, truly awful. At <laughs> uh, yes, I can actually. I can okay. uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I am. I. Am, I'm absolutely a terrible competitive person at times. Um, I I <laughs> I can make everything competitive, which I've worked hard at. That's that's like a definitely big thought flaw of mine. Um, I'm I'm also really not good at prob probably like all of the technical stuff of like computers and websites and stuff like that. That is something I'm terrible at, and I work really i lean heavily on trent on that's for sure that's handy that he's kind of web developing <laughs> skills there yes yes it's super handy because i just kind of been spoiled in that um so the technical side of it and being competitive are probably my two my two things i'm not <laughs> you say you you're competitive you bring competitiveness into lots of things then like oh everything like playing yeah. with your kids or anything like oh yeah like yeah <laughs> It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Like on a hike, I can't be last. Like I kind of have to tell myself I need to relax. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Competitiveness can get you very far in life as well, though. It has its uh, pluses as well. So it, pluses. it can. It can. Yeah. I've, I've worked to calm down the way. I think that's from college sports, though. You know, like everything you're taught to be so competitive and then coming out of that is. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah that makes sense do you ever you ever competitive with trenton on a wedding like when you when you're looking back through the photos and there's like one amazing image you're like yes i got that that was mine every single day after <laughs> <laughs> we come home and i'm like i got the shot and he's like no i got the shot like, <laughs> if we're both photographing prep and we're in a unique place i'll like text him and be like oh buddy i got you on this one he's like, I don't think so we you know we have fun with it um yeah but i think i think like that's the cool part about being a husband and wife team is, you know, we're not like one of us just isn't holding a light stand or assisting one. You know, we each are individuals. We're each different, but we, it's, we really do push each other. And, um, and a lot of that is the competitiveness for sure. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say exactly that, that that competitiveness between you does push it. It pushes yourself, pushes the business, pushes the image taking, pushes everything. And, and then that's only good for your clients at the end of the day, getting the best uh, images possible. So yeah, it's a win win yeah. really. It's as cool. long as we're nice to each other about it. That's the, that's the key. Yes, that's the true. Trend. As long as you're not falling out in like, yeah. you know, other rooms overnight. Yeah, that wouldn't be so good. But yeah. 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 And I've well, learned to be like, yes, Trent, you won this one. You've done well. Yeah. That's good. That's good. To right. <laughs> um, Stacey, what is a, is a bigger question? But um, what, if anything, are you afraid of? Oh, man. 
Yeah. I think, I think, uh, I, I, I worry too much about what people think of, of, you know, like approval, I think is probably. Oh, uh, really? Better. Yeah. You don't yeah. seem to, you don't sound like really? someone to me that would be bothered by what people think. Oh, that's good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, I think approval of others is a worry of mine. Um, or that scares me the most if someone was like super unhappy or didn't like, yeah, or said something. Yeah. In what, when you talk about approval of others, do you mean on a level of like kind of social media likes or do you mean actually people that you kind of know and their opinion of, of you? Yeah, like I would say like if I had an unhappy client with the way I did their wedding, that would be very difficult. Like, be yeah. very difficult. Um, social media, I, I don't understand how that people, you know, it doesn't bother me as much, but definitely like a client or a friend or a peer or another photographer. Um, yeah, that would be. Oh, I understand that. I understand that, but I'm just quite surprised because you seem so confident. And like, it's like, it, yeah. But I totally understand that. Oh, gosh, yeah, I totally understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of marketing, Stacey, you know, and getting yourself out there, getting your getting the business out there, what's been the most effective for you? You know, how do you, if you keep track of these kind of things, how do you get, like, a lot of your weddings? You know, is it is it through social media or SEO or kind of um, past client referrals and things? That's a good question. So it's, it's a, I think it's important and we try to do it. It's a balance of a bunch of things because we don't want all of our eggs in one basket, but, um, mm. you know, I'll, some of it comes from venues because, you know, we know the logistics of ski resorts and we're locals. Um, some of it comes from referrals, like our destination weddings, a lot of times are, you know, family members of a past wedding we did. And they're like, I want you to come with us. You know, we're actually coming to Italy this March, which would be great. Um, but that's like a brother of the wedding we did last year. Um, so family relationships are big. There's actually families that we photograph six or seven weddings in. Really? Wow. That's Uh, cool. And then by the end, we're sitting at the table with them, you know, we're on the reception list and that relationship is, is the, those are the best weddings, um, in our opinion, because they're so invested, we're invested in each other. Um, but then another one is obviously SEO, social media, um, and some planners here and there. Yeah. That's cool. As you say, it's so good, is it, not to have all your eggs in one basket, to have all those different streams, because you never know what's going to happen. And I think the pandemic was something that, you know, taught a lot of us that as well, the importance of kind of diversity. How was it for you, by the way? I mean, we don't generally talk about it so much at the moment now. And yeah. um, But how how was, you know, how was it for you and your business when the pandemic did hit? Um, it kind of hit hard up here more than most because we are an international destination place. Like when you go to our grocery store, there's a bunch of languages, different languages being spoken. Um, All right, cool. you know, a lot of people from Europe come here to ski in Vail and Breckenridge. And so we got hit hard and fast, um, because of our international travel and Vail resorts just shut down. Um, and they own most of the venues. Um, right. and so we got shut down, but we actually photographed a ton of weddings because, People came out here, like rented Airbnb and just did like a small wedding. Uh, cool. Um, and they could be outside a lot, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, nature is where people got married in the snow outside. So unlike most, we, I think we had 15 to 18 weddings. Oh, wow. In 2020. So really. Yeah. yeah a lot, a wow. lot of it was just one of us photographing it because it downsized and they didn't want to, they wanted to minimize exposure, but sure. yeah, it was. We were really blessed. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Good to hear. Good to hear. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, have you ever been, I don't know why, just because you talked about being an international destination and things. Well, have you ever been over to the UK? No, I, I have not. I have not been to Europe, to be honest. Oh, really? No. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, it be awesome when you shoot. Did you say you're shooting in Venice in March? Was it? Did you say Venice? It, uh, it, it's up in the Dolomites. It's like we're going to fly into Venice and we go up to a ski resort. So I don't know the exact town because I'm I'm going to butcher the name and because I'm not an international travel. Oh, cool. <laughs> but, but it is as a, at a ski resort. They are going to take a gondola up. Um, it's up in the snow and the mountains, and then uh, they'll take a snow cat down at night. So it will uh, be quite fun. Yeah, like home from home for you. That's cool though. Oh uh, yeah, I'm very excited to do. I'm um, hoping to take the skis and kind of enjoy some of that area. Yeah. Aww. Very cool. Very cool. I was going to say, well, you're not missing that much by not coming to the UK as well. You know? I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I doubt it. I, I, I want to see it all. <laughs> yeah, you've got plenty of time. You've got plenty of time. Um, yeah. 
do you, Stacey, do you, it's a, it's a big question as well, but do you think about the future, you know, whether you'll still be shooting weddings in 10 years time and things? Do you ever think about that? Oh, all the time. I'm a planner. So I okay. love to think and dream big. Uh, I, I picture myself as a lifer. I mean, I call it, I say I'm a lifer because I genuinely love weddings. Um, I love that people are really transparent on a wedding day. The best of the, the best of them shine out. Sometimes the, you know, people's lowest points shine out. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can walk into a room and it doesn't take three days of building rapport. People are just true color. Um, and I think technically it's one of the more challenging days of, to be a photographer in the industry because you're doing prep, you know, mountaintop, bright sun, dark reception, you know, like you're challenged with light and different environments as a photographer and to be creative on the fly. Um, oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it just, it pushes me constantly um, and I love it. Uh, so in 10 years, do I want to be photographing weddings? Yes. I, I don't know at what age that, stops or what how clients change with me um but uh i am i hope to i hope to be doing this for another 10 years that's cool Absolutely. cool yeah. good stuff and i'm sure you will i'm sure you will <laughs> yeah, that's cool. it's a good point as well that some people think you know as we get older well will i still be able to do it because you know i'll be older and like people who get married are generally younger and stuff but as you say i think as well as still getting younger clients i think we'll still we'll get clients that are maybe older as well though and things that that'll change as well yeah and i think like the cool one of the cool things about the clients that we attract is they're all different walks like i have you know, I, we photographed some young 20 year olds and then we, you know, um, we photographed quite a few weddings, 40, and I had multiple that were 50. It was their second marriage oh, cool. and with kids. And I love those because sometimes they understand what the real importance of life is a little bit more because they've been through so much, mm, that's um, true. embracing moments more with their children. And, um, mm. yeah, they're all great. So. Uh, that's true isn't it yeah, it's so yeah. true yeah it's so true i do only rarely do i do weddings now of like say early 20s it's quite unusual for me i'd I say my average age is probably early 30s i reckon like 30 33 yeah. something like that yeah that makes sense yeah but and, and it was so strange like doing a wedding where their email address ended in like where I could tell there were only 20 few. Actually, I'm sounding old now. I am sort of old, but it's like <laughs> I, I, I felt more I related more to like the mother of the bride at last week's wedding than like than the bride. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's, that's funny, isn't that's it? So that's funny. funny. Um, let's go to a, a random question. Um, Stacy, do you prefer sleeping or eating? Sleeping. Oh, really? Straight up, straight up. Yeah, sleeping. Yeah. Sleeping is nice, isn't it? But then, wait a minute, you've just said you prefer sleeping, but then you, you, you love to get up really early as well. Yeah, I like to get up early. Um, mornings, I mean, I, yeah, mornings I have, like, the best energy because, obviously, it, as you can tell. Yeah, you <laughs> are very energetic <laughs> for six in the morning. <laughs> He's like, I can't imagine her on two cups of coffee, right? Um, <laughs> but, um, but, no, morning, I do love to get up early, but I always – prefer a good night's sleep okay yeah what time do you go to bed um it varies uh you know 11 12 oh that's late you know that's late on work, on work nights yeah but if i can i will go to bed at nine or yes isn't that nice when you get to sleep at like you're actually asleep at like half night i'm like wow well, yeah this is a life i love that it's great this is that <laughs> you like sit there and you feel guilty like should i be doing something or can i go to sleep yeah oh no i love it so i rarely i don't work in the night times actually so obviously i'm like busy with my own wedding photography and running with photography with family yeah. but i don't work in the evening so i switch off like and because my wife runs her own business as well so we both like from like seven o'clock onwards we don't um we don't work which i just need that time and not working do you often work in the evenings then um yeah so because we have young kids i mean there's nights where oh, yeah. I, gotta, mm. I gotta drink a cup of coffee at seven and and pull in editing till late if i yeah, have to get sure. stuff done and um which is fine i'm you know used to it with young kids but yeah it, it just varies depending on what i have when I have childcare, you know. Yeah, no, I totally understand that. Yeah, I totally understand that. Um, here's uh, this is another big question. I'm dropping all the big questions on you, Stacey, because I, I like I just, it. Oh, good. I like. I, I just love your answers. They're super. So, okay. So this one, I've I've worded this question a bit um, 
bit confusingly maybe but i'm gonna ask you anyway um yeah so when you've reached old age stacy which i'm sure is very oh. far away when you've reached old age and you're looking back at your life what would you like to think about the life you've led oh i would like to think that um i embraced every moment in in life that's cool yes yeah. yeah, that's such yeah. A, a beautiful, dessert. yeah, like <laughs> succinct way that it is. That's, that's really good. That's you, I told you I was an emotional person. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, I would hope that I embraced every different moment that like, not just day to day moments, but phases of life with kids and life and marriage and career. And I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, you couldn't ask for, for more, really. Yeah, mm -hmm. so cool. Very cool. Um, let's go on to a, a less big question. But um, yeah. do you do you collect anything at all? Oh, do I collect anything? Oh man, I I don't. The only thing I thought of when you mentioned that is we have a box of treasures in our house. Treasures um, of all the cool things we found on hikes and backpacking and being in nature, and it's. It's more of like a thing between me, you know, it's more of a thing for the kids, but I've actually really enjoyed it. Like every like old nail by a mine or uh, that's cool. Cool, cool rock or unique feather or different driftwood. <laughs> um, and <laughs> it's kind of been a thing like when we travel, like I'm sure when we go to Telluride this week, like the kids will bring home some little rock or stick or it could be really anything that someone would just walk over. But it's filled with these things from nature and our time together. And I'd say that's the kids love it. And it sits oh, yeah. in the room and we look at it. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. That's a really yeah. nice thing. I like the way you call them treasures as well. That's very, <laughs> <laughs> it's so really yeah. nice. Yeah. And to be able to eat, look at each thing and just, yeah, be able to remember the trip that that was taken from things. That's really, really nice. Yeah. yeah. Some of, some of them I'm like, that's, you know, sometimes it's a bone or a, cr a dried crawdad where I'm like, let's throw that one out. But most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, have you ever met or photographed anyone famous? Oh, man. Anyone famous? Um, no one, like, particularly famous, I would say. I'm trying to think. Sounds like this one might be. Some, some like athletes, you know, some NFL, some people in oh, the that's cool. baseball. Yeah. Some of these mountain resorts cost a lot of money. And so sometimes that will happen. But I really probably wouldn't even know if I did unless they told me. Um, so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, just probably some athletes, I would say. No, that's in particular. Yeah. No. That's cool though. Yeah, that's cool. I've been like that at a wedding actually. And someone said, Oh, do you know who that is? I was like, No, no. So someone's yeah. had to tell yeah, people have to tell me. I'm so like out of the loop with like fame yeah. and <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Definitely like the athlete pool has a few times, I'd say. Yep. I uh, do you watch much sport in general? Are you into because you played it, do you watch it as well or? No, I haven't. I don't we don't watch much sports at all i mean we got we actually got into hockey my son loves hockey and i grew up in the midwest so like in south dakota okay. um which is like you know way up there and hockey was big and so um we got and when you really, say when you say hockey is that ice hockey yes ice ah, hockey okay. yeah so we got into we get into watching like the stanley cup final the abs won this year which is awesome oh, um cool. and trent got to go help a buddy photograph one of the games um, oh that must be fun yeah, and so Easton, our son, thought that was just so cool. So, um, yeah, that we we like hockey, watching hockey a little bit. Have you ever played it? Yeah, so we have like a pond here that freezes over, and a couple of us in the neighborhood we make our own little ice rink. Oh, that's so um, cool! Clean it out, and yeah, we I love to skate. Um, our kids are learning. <laughs> yeah, but I do I do love to be on the ice. That's fun. He you you li and you know you mentioned how you like kind of like the hallmark christmas films to me your oh. life sounds your life sounds like a hallmark christmas film <laughs> <laughs> oh it's that it's maybe i should tell you all the bad too i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah we like if it's snowing out we put like outdoor lights on there and the, the snow falls and you can light it oh that's the best it happens like once a winter we time it right or i've been out there a couple times but yeah it is it is very hallmarky, for lack of a better word. That's very cool. That yeah. is very cool. Do you get white Christmases then frequently? Oh, lots of snow. Like we've yeah. we have photographed a wedding 
mid June that has gotten like three or four inches of snow. Really? <laughs> Gosh, yeah. that's mad. Yeah. Mad. yeah. Well, so most Christmases though for you, it, it's snowing on Christmas. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, that's yeah. so nice. I don't know. I I think I've had like one white Christmas in my whole lifetime here in the UK. I think. Yeah. Oh, you got to add it to your list. You've got to like <laughs> <laughs> going somewhere where it snows. There's just nothing better than waking up, and especially if it snow. Like my favorite is waking up when it it snows the night. You know, Christmas Eve night, and you wake up to fresh snow in the morning. Oh yeah, that's so romantic. It is. Aww. It really is. I want that, Stacey. I want it. I want it. <laughs> I'll send you pics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yes. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man, Stacy, I've just uh, looked down. Honestly, this it's honestly flying by, and I, I I love this. It's just so it's just been so lovely talking to you. It's just um you yeah, really fun. Yeah. Um, I've still got time for one more question, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh let's do this one. Yeah, because yes, not as much about this. So yes, yeah, Stacy, what would be your top tips or just a bit of advice or any thoughts on just helping someone become better at the documentary side of what we do so yeah it could be a top tip or just any thoughts really um i think like the my a couple tips i would give is just being patient um on a wedding day there's so many distracting elements that you feel like you're missing something but just trusting your instinct and like the guy who fell in that chair, you know, like why was I photographing three people sitting in a chair and not looking at the bride and groom, right? But mm -hmm. being patient, trusting your instincts um, is easier said than done. It's something I still work on. Um, but another thing with being a great documentary photography is, photographer is really knowing your subjects and submersing, you know, putting yourself in their shoes, in their family, like getting to know them and listening and being a good observer. Um, if you feel like their love or their stress or their tension or how they feel, you can kind of, in a way, just anticipate better and know them and properly reflect them through your lens. Um, and that I love so, to do that. Yeah, that is so true. Both bits of really great advice there. Um, yeah, great, great things. And I totally understand with you, especially the, the patience is so tough, especially when I started, you know, I felt like I just had to be photographing like every single second of the day. And I was a bit like a headless chicken. But once you slow down, it's it's so much more rewarding. It is. And it's the hardest thing. I mean, I'm, it's very mm. clear. I'm a hyper person. Like I'm just very hyper. So like for me to like be pre like to sit and be patient and wait is takes practice all the time. <laughs> Ah, oh, both bit, both great bits of advice. The the the, the thing, be, yeah, the empathy and being empathetic and immersing yourself yeah. is so important, isn't it? The empathy is the the word I should have used. That's perfect. Yes, absolutely. Being showing empathy towards everyone. Yeah. Mm. How do you increase? I always say, how do you increase that though? How do say if someone wanted to ingratiate themselves more with the wedding or, or to, you know, how do you? immerse yourself more how have you immersed yourself more into it is it just kind of just opening up more emotionally not seeing it as a job you know and just mm -hmm. just is, is is that the core of it or is there anything else i think like coming i think a big part is the way you walk into a wedding so like you know if you need to be at the venue 30 minutes early to like clear your mind of everything that's going on at home or stress or kids or life um and just be like, I'm leaving all that out the door and I am only focused on what's happening in this room and what the feelings are and the tension um, is a big part of it. And yeah. I think st starting in a bridal prep room or a groom prep room is great because it's usually tight. There's people, it's confined, it's loud. And so you get a feel for the day and it's really fast. So even like going 20 minutes earlier to the wedding and just sitting there and listening and understanding like the people and how they talk, how they communicate you know, who, how they, you know, if they're looking at each other in the eye when they, are they dancing? Are they loud? Are they aggressive? Like just watching without being like, I got to take a photo. What should I take a photo of? Um, yeah. I think really set the tone for the day. Yeah. That's great advice. That's so true. That's so cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, Stacy, it's so enjoyed talking to you. It's been yeah. Fun. It's like talking to an old friend. It's I know. Great. Yeah. We've never spoken it. before. It's so cool. It's so cool. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. Thank you for being so open and giving great bits of advice and great stories. And just, uh, I really enjoyed it. Likewise. Likewise. I appreciate your time.
Oh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you getting up at 6 a.m. to talk to me. So thank you for that. That's awesome. Yeah, um, everyone's still sleeping, so it's perfect. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, and anyone listening now, do head to thisreportage.com. I'll include a link through to Stacey and Trent's website and the specific awesome reportage war that Stacey just spoke about. And um, yeah, and keep and people keep an ear out for when um, Stacey and Trent do their next workshop. So, um, it sounds great. I'm sure I'm sure it's awesome. So yeah, Stacey, hopefully I'll get to meet you sometime if you ever venture over to the uk i will definitely let you know absolutely <laughs> enjoy the rest of your day all right you too take care bye-bye Bye. bye-bye you've been listening to the 120th episode of the this is reportage podcast really enjoyed my chat with stacy hope you enjoyed it too head to this is reportage.com for a link to stacy's website her workshop and to see the reportage award you spoke about on the episode too We now have 120 episodes of the podcast available where we speak to wedding and family photographers from all over the world. If you like this episode, delve into our back catalogue for lots more. If you're not a member of this reportage or this reportage family, check out all the benefits of joining us, including an unlimited number of images on your profile, 60 individual award and 18 story award entries per year, invites to our physical meetups and parties, exclusive discounts, hours of educational videos featuring tips and advice from some of the world's best photographers and much more too. Submissions are open now for our next award collections. The deadline is the same for both our wedding site and our family site. Submit by 2359 GMT on the 23rd of November 2022. And hopefully I'll get to see you in December for the TIR and TIRF Christmas party in London. Remember this is a totally free event for members and you can bring a guest along as well. Just remember to RSVP via the link in the members area or newsletter. If you're not a member yet, there's still time to join and come along to the party as well. Hopefully see you there. No poses, nothing staged. This is Reportage. And this is bye for now.